Welcome to the Redefine Effects YouTube channel everybody. If you are completely new here, my name is Jesse and today I'll show you how to use V-Ray Fur inside of 3ds Max. So we can start just by creating some kind of an object to generate our fur on top of. So I'll just make this box. And we're gonna want the fur to only show up on this top polygon. So I'll just convert this into an edible poly select this top polygon and set the ID to 1, it already is, so you can do Control i and set the remaining polygons to ID 2. So now we can just go under Create Standard V-Ray and let's create a V-Ray Fur object. So since I already had the box selected, V-Ray Fur will automatically use the selected object to birth the fur onto. Now it's still born around the entire object, so what we can do is just scroll down here to placement and you can say material ID and it's set to one. So now we only have our fur on the top polygon. We can right click, say V-Ray VFB, open the frame buffer and just click enable interactive rendering. Right, so this is what it looks like. Now if you wanna show more of the fur inside of the viewport, you can just scroll down here to viewport display and increase the maximum amount of hair inside of the viewport. So this is a very simple modifier and most of the settings are very intuitive. So you have length, right? So if I raise this to 25 centimeters, we're gonna get longer hair. You have thickness, also pretty self-explanatory. So if I set this to one, we get much, much thicker hair to show up. Then we have gravity, right? So the lower the gravity, the more the hair will be pushed downwards. So if I set the gravity to minus 10, they basically they disappear it's too strong of a gravity so maybe minus five right they're just bending um, downwards under the force of gravity now the bend actually has a similar effect to gravity it will just bend the hair so if i set this to three you see it's actually giving you almost the same result as increasing the gravity the main difference is that if this was like a vertical wall then the gravity will only push it down while bend will still bend it upwards and to the left and to the right. So that's really the difference between bend and gravity. And then we have taper. So the higher this value, the thinner the tops of the hair will be and the thicker the roots will be. So if I increase this to two, then if you look at this preview here, right, the tips are getting thinner and the roots are getting thicker, kind of like real hair would. So then you have this material ID setting. And that's because you can actually apply several V-Ray furs to the same object, right? So what I can do is enable this material ID, leave it at one, then I can select the box again and add another V-Ray fur. So I have two of them on top of each other. And for this one, maybe I'll just set the length to five centimeters and I'll set the material ID to two. So now I can just apply this simple multi-sub object material that I've prepared and select both V-Ray first and apply this multi-sub object material. And now as you can see, V-Ray Fur 2 is green and V-Ray 2 1 is yellow. So that's how this material ID works. So just to make this look a bit nicer, I'll just apply a simple white V-Ray material to the V-Ray Fur and maybe we can just actually make it light blue. And I'll just make the box black so we can see the hair. Now when it comes to materials, you can apply any material to V-Ray Fur, right? So I can raise the reflection to make them shinier. Any, everything that you're used to will work here also. So then this geometric detail, that's basically like segments for your geometry in Max. So if I lower the knots, you can see we're getting less and less segments inside of the essentially splines. So as I go lower, you can see we're getting some sharp corners. It's starting to look pretty low res to one, right? So whenever you have a lot of bent in the hair, you might need to increase the knots to get rid of any sort of sharp edges. All right, so then you have some settings for variation. That's pretty self-explanatory. You can give variation to their direction, their length. So if I increase the length variation to one, um, then we're gonna get some very long and some very short hair. Same thing for the thickness, gravity, and the curl. So very importantly, distribution here controls how many hair you actually get. So that's very important to get something like this look where you need to raise it up quite high to get that nice sort of fuzzy look. So you can either do per face, which means per one triangle on your geometry, or you can do per area, 
which means per one squared unit of your scene scale. So right now if I go under customize, unit setup, I'm working in centimeters and one unit is one centimeter for me as usual in my tutorials. This means that one area here means one centimeter by one centimeter, one centimeter squared. So right now I'm generating 0.2 hair per one square centimeter. So I can raise this way higher, I can do like 10 strands of fur per one square centimeter and I'm gonna get something a lot more intense. And actually because I wanna show you how the curl works, let me set this to just maybe 0.1 per area and then zoom in on these hairs so you can see how the curl works. So if I enable that, it's basically gonna spin them like a spiral. So I can increase the curl radius and then I can increase the number of curls, right? And they're just sort of spinning around, sort of like a helix object inside of Max. So this is a great example of where you need to raise the knots because everything is getting too sharp. So I need to just go back and increase the amount of knots to smooth this out and get some nice smooth curls. So just to show you how I made the thumbnail, I just switched back to my original scene to show you how these maps work. So for any of these settings, you can insert a map, right? So that's how I got this variation in the bent direction. It almost looks like it's waving in the wind. So it's very simple to do. Basically, you will just go under any material, click on this diffuse map, and you can just add a noise or you can add a gradient, whatever you want, right? To get the kind of pattern that you're after. So I just selected noise and this works just like any other map in Max. So the amount of contrast in the noise will control the strength of the effect on the fur. So the whiter the whites and the blacker the blacks, the more difference there will be in the direction of the fur in this case, because I set the map to bend direction. So I can reduce the size of the noise to maybe just half of what it was, which is 30. Right, I'm gonna get a lot more noise in there. And as far as the color going from white to blue, basically I'm just applying a basic material with a gradient ramp inside of the diffuse. And I just set my colors here from white to blue. And you need to just change the V axis angle here to 90 so that the color is going from bottom to top. And it will basically color everything on the on the z axis going up from white to blue so then just to make it more interesting i added this furry ball to complete sort of the thumbnail artwork i did 50 strands per area and then i just have the noise map in here as well so again v-ray fur super simple to use very fun to use you can get some nice fuzzy satisfying results if you guys found this tutorial helpful as always i would very much appreciate a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe, there are a ton more VRA tutorials on the channel, so the links to everything are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.